Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Ask Alice Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, your host, Alice Badler, answers everyday questions with her unpredictable, interactive, spontaneous, and engaging style. You can easily ask your questions, share your thoughts, and join the conversation by calling into the show at Blog Talk Radio. Alice is waiting for you. From the smallest things to the deeply profound, the Ask Alice Show is the place to ask your questions and get real answers. Here's your host, Alice Battler. Well, good evening, everyone. So nice to have you here with me as usual. Um, I'd like to remind you that we are having a contest going on this month. During each show, I typically say a couple of things about myself, sometimes silly, sometimes not so much. But on the last show of this month, I'm going to ask a question and we'll have a winner. I'm going to give more details about, you know, how we're going to pick the winner on that last show. The prize will be a $25 gift certificate for Amazon. So pay attention to the small things. And let's have some fun. And I know, you know, I love hearing your observations, your questions about either the current conversation or to start a new conversation. So, you know, do press one on your phone to get into the queue if you would like to talk to me. And now let's talk about the language of love. A while ago, I noticed uh, something rather interesting about myself as it pertains to romantic love. When I've been in relationships, I always seem to feel especially adored when the man would pay attention to the things that I loved and then would act upon them. Uh, when my favorite coffee fixings and foods were in his home, when he would bring me a white flower every now and then just because he knew how much I liked white flowers. One man even bought me ice skating lessons because he overheard me talking about how much I wished I could skate. I thought that was so sweet. And you know what? Yes, those things made me feel cherished. As I looked further back on these relationships, I also realized that I would do those same things for the men in my life. I might pick up their favorite dessert while at the store, get them a subscription to a magazine for something I knew they'd enjoy, maybe put a little note in their pocket. Surprisingly, I did not always get the response from the men I would have expected. One man was not so happy with me when I put a cute little magnet on his refrigerator. And another man, he told me, to add anything on his shopping list that I would like in his kitchen. And yet, still, I was bringing my own almond milk and stevia for my coffee to his home. Mm Mm-hmm. Then I came upon what is called the five love languages. Dr. Gary Chapman, who's a marriage counselor for well over 30 years, realized that most people identified with a primary way in which they feel loved. I'm going to tell you what those five love languages are with a bit of a short description. And then uh, as we move forward into the show, we can go into more detail about them or discuss how we can figure them out um, or whatever you'd want to do with this. So one of them is words of affirmation. This is praising someone. That would be a thank you when they do something nice for you. Maybe a, wow, you look especially gorgeous today. And of course, and I love you or I care deeply for you because you do. Then there's acts of service. This is doing simple tasks for someone without being asked, like washing the dishes, ironing their shirt for them, cooking a special meal, things of that sort. Receiving gifts. They do not have to be anything grand. It really is that the other knows you are thinking about them. And tokens are how they enjoy being shown that. Quality time. 
time spent just together being fully present and fully engaged with each other. Turn off that cell phone and give your attention to your partner. And lastly, we have physical touch. This is exactly as it sounds. Hand-holding, a wonderful hug, a kiss, sex, and let's not forget about a massage. Although really, who doesn't want a massage? So I don't know if I would count that <laughs> there. But after reading this, it became apparent to me that my primary love language is obviously receiving gifts. So I looked a little harder at my own past experiences, and I saw that I also very much enjoyed putting my arm in the arm of my love while we walked down the street or holding hands, and I would usually touch him maybe on the arm while we were talking and other endearing little touches. So it seemed that touch is my secondary love language. But what I found particularly intriguing as I was looking back was I realized that I gave the expression of love to others that I wanted to receive rather than giving them what made them feel valued. Of course, I didn't know any better. And I believe that is probably what most of us do. We give what we enjoy receiving. No wonder we're all so baffled. If a man I'm involved with experiences the feeling of love through words of affirmation and I'm giving him little gifts all the time, not going to feel it. And we are both left disappointed and confused. I found this understanding unbelievably liberating. Once we know our own love language, we can gently explain it to our partner. And when we know theirs, we can express our love to them in a way that will fill their heart. Such subtle things that make all the difference in coming together. And by the way, the love languages are not for romantic partners only. Like what a wonderful thing to do for all the people in our lives that we love. So that's what's on my mind, and now it's your turn. And I think it's time to bring on my executive producer, the ever-fabulous and amazing Andy Lyon. Hello there, Andy. Hello there, Alan. I love our conversation tonight. Yes, and uh, after you, I know you, you, you have a, a few things to say to our audience. I would especially... Um, love to hear your thoughts on this being in a successful and long term marriage. So, oh, yeah, I was really, I'll, I'll share what my husband's favorite love language was, and I was not giving it to him. I almost went, oh, shoot, when I learned it. But that's for <laughs> later, everybody. <laughs> we have right. a great crowd tonight. We have great folks on the phone. We have great folks in the chat room, as always, for your. Ask Alice Shell. I just want to give a few reminders for this delicious audience. Listeners, if you haven't done so already, please remember to follow Alice here on Blog Talk Radio. That way you'll receive a reminder before Alice goes live each time. So yay. And all you have to do is click on the follow button on the Ask Alice Show's homepage right here on Blog Talk Radio. It's easy breezy. And we thank you, right, Alice, for your follow love. Oh. And yeah, it is. And and international callers, remember, you can always use Skype. Don't spend that money when you don't have to. And, folks, if you're ever experiencing difficulties with audio or the chat room, please be sure to refresh your screen. And then one final note for those who are calling in live and wish to speak with Alice, um, remember to hit the number one on your dial pad. That way I get a handy dandy yoo-hoo right here in the studio that says, hey, I want to ask Alice a question or bring a comment or an aware moment with Alice, and then I'll know to bring you on, and I'll announce the last four digits of your phone number. There you go. Take it away, Alice. Um, well, I guess my my first question is I'd I'd like to know you got me intrigued about uh, how you discovered your darling husband's uh, love language and 
if you know yours and you know that whole give us a little uh, a little yeah. story on you well five years ago someone introduced me to gary chapman's book the five love languages and it's of course the secret to love that last so i grabbed it and we've been together 25 years by then and i thought it's always good to enlighten and, and bring more to the relationship so i read it and i thought oh yes words of affirmation that's me you're beautiful you're wonderful you're amazing don't you look fabulous oh, <laughs> i'm sorry to laugh but i know you andy and that's so true <laughs> <laughs> and i can pat my hair and go thank you and oh i you know it's really that whole appreciation um formula that really really works for me so i would be saying to my darling man oh don't you look great oh isn't that wonderful and gosh it never meant anything to him yet he'd be oh can i get that for you here honey let me bring you your coffee in bed and let me bring you this and let me do that for you and i was like okay fine that's nice uh but i didn't get that that's what was important for him until i read the five one yeah the five love languages and acts of service were so important for Chet, my darling man. And I had to learn, I was like, oh, shoot, because, you know, I like to be waited on, but do I want to wait on somebody else? Heck no. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, but I had to understand that, you know, actions speak louder than words for my darling man. And so I had to get better at acts of service and, and, and really learn how to do sweet little things. Now, you know, I'm not the best massager in the world, but I can certainly get him a massage. And there are plenty of little things that I had I learned to do and that I did in a way that made him feel it was an act of service. So, oh, and I was great. able to then, you know, tell him, you know, I need to hear those words of appreciation. So when I've done something that was delicious or wonderful or hard, I just love to be told, wow, good for you. I don't know, maybe I'm just like a golden retriever. <laughs> uh, well, uh, oh, God, you bring up so many things. The massage thing, what I find so so interesting, you know, when I, you know, as I was writing and I, you know, thought that was um, an, an act of sir, a touch. But the truth is that to me, massage mm -hmm. comes under, mm -hmm. that's an act of service. That's a touch. That's mm -hmm. um, a gift. I mean, right. I I think everybody likes a massage. I just had to throw that in because. Oh, I love that. I do. I don't even think that's a love and, language. I think that's just a, a deal. Right. And, and Alice, you said something early on, too, which is really important, that this isn't just for couples. This is, you know, work relationships. I mean, you may mm -hmm. think you're praising somebody, you know, whether it's your boss or someone you're working with and it's going right over their head and they're not getting it. And so it's really good to find out or look for signs. And once you read this book, you'll you'll hear you'll hear and see signs that will give you the clue what an act of service or in touch or words of appreciation, affirmation, quality time, physical touch, all of that can do for someone. Alex, we have a caller who's waiting. Would you like me to bring them on? Sure. Okay, so we yeah. have a caller whose last four digits are 6048. Welcome to the Ask Alice Show. Hello, it's Michelle. Oh, Michelle, I always love when you call in, and I happen to know you've read this book and done this work with your darling man, if I recall, right? I have, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. It was interesting when we first started dating. Um, he... Uh, wanted a lot of time with me and I started feeling very pressured and very much like I don't know if this is going to work I don't know if I have that much time to give and as we went on a little bit I um, I suggested that maybe we each take this quiz and figure out what our love language was and being the awesome person that he is and very interested with his own self-development he was totally on board and um, so we took the quiz, and lo and behold, his number one is, can you guess? Oh, I can't even. Quality time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quality time, followed closely by um, touch. And um, mine, interestingly, had changed from when I was married. 
and um, were now words of affirmation and quality time. So what we tried to do together was really understand what, what does that mean for us and um, then looked for ways that we could incorporate that into our dating. Um, and so even now, I when whenever I'm giving him, um, you know, a Christmas gift, a birthday gift, or whatever kind of gift, um, the first thing that I look for is something that is an experience for us to do together because it gives us uninterrupted time together, and it creates beautiful memories along the way. And mm. he absolutely loves it, and it has really um, helped bring us together in that way to really understand what those are. And I tell him all the time, and he is so gracious with his words with me, you're an amazing mom, you're going to rock your new job, whatever it is. I just tell him how much that means to me because those affirmations really just make me, it's like somebody turns on a light inside of me. It's really remarkable. Um, so it's been really fun to understand that about each other and really both of us work to uh, deliver that for our partner because we love them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, this is what we're talking about. It's it's really once you understand, and the book is great because it gives quizzes. It's not always easy to figure out your own, much less somebody else's. And the book, um, you know, is written, it, it, Dr. Chapman, he wrote, it's a great book, uh, and the quizzes. So it's really nice if you're coupled up, if you're both willing to do that together because look it makes such a huge difference in a relationship it really does and on the really? website there's a five love languages web website also they have um, a challenge on there you can do this five love languages challenge i think actually we ended up with an app on our phone for wow. each day it would give us something to do related to um you know for me it was something to do for him for quality time and, you know, he had one for me. Um, and it was really fun uh, to do or to say different things or to, you know, plant little seeds about things we could do. So that was a nice addition to the book oh, and all the great information. That's fabulous. I'm really glad you, you shared that with me. I'm actually writing that down. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> wonderful to know about the app. What What a joy to have, like, little, you know, thing. Here's the love language do this today a little something that's great right. we thought it might be kind of corny when we first started uh, but then by the time we got done we were sad because we really enjoyed it oh well there's I you know that. interestingly enough um since he wrote the original book which is for couples and the quizzes um he's written many many other books i don't know all of them i know he's written one that's just for men only, you know, how to determine a man's love language outside of partnership, women, teens, children. I would venture to guess that he might have a book out there with more of those, you know? He sure might. He sure might. I mean, he, he, <laughs> once people got onto this and he uh, realized how, how, you know, in, in, incredibly potent this is, um, you know, I haven't read the other books, but I, I'm really happy to see they're out there so that we can, like I said, show our love to the other the other people, our children, one for teenagers. I, well, my daughter's in her 20s, but that might be fun for you. You've got two teens. I do. I was thinking about that. I think children are very hard. They're harder to figure out than uh, adults, I think. I think yeah, they're so, too. Yeah, yeah. I think I've got my daughter figured out, but not my son so much. Mm. And, and when you're dealing with siblings, too, you know, you have one that's going to be the willful one. You're going to have one that's going to be the people pleaser. So you have to work around those you know, positions that they have, so to speak, within the home to find that. I love that you, you know, you found out about your words of appreciation, too, and affirmation, Michelle. I love that because it does. It, it just really feels like there's a, a closeness more of a closeness with that type it of does, appreciation, and it was, right? Yes, and it was very surprising to me because I was always very much a person that I don't need praise. I don't, you know, I don't need any recognition. I don't need any of that. Um, but boy, I had no idea what I was missing and how 
how much it truly touches my soul when that happens. Mm. That's why mm. I do think it's really great uh, if you can get your partner to read the book as well so that they can understand how important this is. Because we can tell them, you know, I've tried to say, you know, I, I realize mine just because, you know, as I said earlier, I, it was obvious what mine was, my two were. And um, I did try to explain them um, to men. And they get like, you know, unless they really understand what you're talking about, you know, they don't always, and I'm not just saying men, I'm sure women would feel the same if a man came to them. You know, it's a very different concept that they feel like you're asking and you're expecting when that's not what it's about. So it's beautiful when a couple will read that book together. And I love, uh, you've got a special guy there, Michelle, turns out, so. I sure do. You sure do. Um, but, yeah, I really appreciate you sharing that story with us. Thank you. Thank you. I love when you call in. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good rest of the show. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Michelle. Thanks for adding so much value, and Michelle. And on that note, Eli in the chat room asked me, <laughs> Andy, the longest relationship I have ever been in lasted seven years. You've managed 30. How do you keep it fresh? Well, I, I'll be honest with all of you. It takes work. You change. You evolve. You need to stay connected with each other and grow together. Even if it's growing parallel, you need to be growing together. And then, of course, anybody knows that when you add kids into the equation, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That can, you know, bring many challenges, especially when you're sleep deprived. But Eli, I really, it was important to us to bring in help, whether it was a coach or a therapist or a relationship specialist. In different stages, we've needed different kinds of help because, you know, life happens. And so, uh, and as you're going along and kids or death happens or job loss, income loss or income gain, anything can really throw a wrench into the free-flowing relationship if you don't stay on top of it. And at the Golden Globe Awards, I saw Will and Jaden Smith, you know, someone said, how do you guys keep doing it? Or, or what advice do you have for me as a, as a newlywed? And they said, keep doing it, stay in the game. So that's the other thing I say. Make it your priority. Make your relationship the number one priority in your life before the kids because they need you to be in that strong relationship as a role model. So that was a great question. Thank you. You know, I'm really glad that you just said that, Andy, about um, – the, re the relationship needs to come before the kids because when I've said that to people, um, just, you know, I haven't been in a long relationship like you, but I've always been aware of that, that you must, the, the relationship, your number one priority. It doesn't mean we don't love our children more than life itself. Uh, it means exactly what you said. As long as mm -hmm. that relationship is our priority and we're working on it, we're actually better role models. We take the time uh, for ourselves away from our children. That was a beautiful and very key point. And plus, I also love what you said about um, bringing people in. Um, almost everybody I know that's been in a, a, a long relationship like you, they, they, they have struggled. And a lot of people will walk away. But those that don't, those that are so committed to getting through the struggles have the stronger bond. And uh, I think that's great. Thank you, Andy, for, and for thank you, Eli, for asking the question. That was great information. Yeah. And I get that things, you know, relationships do evolve to the point where you can no longer go on together. And so this new way of uncoupling that people are talking about you know, conscious uncoupling is so great. Again, making the children in those cases the pillars of the separation. Um, we have another question from our Robin in our audience, and that is her darling man hardly ever says, I love you. And she really needs this. He only says it when she says it first. It would be nice to hear it once first, once in a blue moon. What are your thoughts around that? 
Well, I mean, it's exactly what we're talking about. It's obvious that um, words of affirmation is not his love language. And again, what I had said earlier is until you become aware of uh, the love languages and how important they are, uh, you tend to give what you want to receive. So obviously for him, words of affirmation are not important. So he, he's not able to give them or not aware. Um, maybe, which would be really great, is uh, if Robin could, they could read the book together. So he could understand how important it is. And then he would learn that she needs at least an I love you. Uh, that that may not be her strongest or her primary love language, but we're all seeing we have a primary and a secondary. And, um, you know, some people don't need to hear I love you so much. They they feel it through the actions, through the, through the acts of service, through the other languages. So I would suggest uh, to Robin that she go out and buy that book and very lovingly, you always, communicate in a very loving way let him know that you found this out and maybe tell him I would love to be able to express my love for you in the way that you will really feel it so it make it all about him so that they can do the book and read the quizzes and in doing that guess what he'll figure out what she needs <laughs> well and especially when she uses her her man language which is to say it's important to me to hear I love you or hear these words of appreciation. Because when you frame it like that, the male brain goes, oh, okay. And they don't see it as criticism, um, which they, they do not like, and it's not effective. It's not at all. Uh, we, we always have to learn to speak to men in a way that it doesn't feel like, we're complaining uh, or that sort of thing. It's a, th this is the unfortunate part about the chat room is that I can't, I mean, I can ask Robin a question and I will uh, to see uh, what her response is, but, you know, it's, you know, a little harder. So my, my question to um, Robin would be exactly that. Has she ever told him? Uh, that that is important to her. And, of course, even if she has, how has she said it? Because you know what typically happens? People will say, you know, you never tell me you love me. I mean, that's the human condition. Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know what, darling, it makes me feel so cherished and so amazing when you tell me you love me when you make it all about you like you said it's important to me when it's never you don't you don't when it's about how you feel and what's important to you that's how we have to use our words right andy absolutely and yeah laura in the chat room is saying that her parents are are just celebrated 50 years together, and her dad is not Mr. I love you, honey. You know, he's definitely shares his, his love language in a way that is more reserved, yet he still is very affectionate and holds his, his you know, Laura's mom's hands, etc. So, yeah, couples can work this out and come to terms with the language that's going to work best for them. And but many do without even knowing the love languages. Many just you know, they bond so well or they get to know each other so well, they don't know what they've figured out. They don't know that they figured right. that out, but that's what they figured out. Well, and, so. and my darling man, I, for the first time in my life, when I met him, I received unconditional love and I'd never experienced that before. It was very healing. And I know I was very grateful when I met him for that gift. Mm. Um, and that's a beautiful so. language of love. A beautiful language of love. And you know what um, is interesting? You know, we're to talking, I don't know why Laura talking about her mother, we're talking about partnership. But it was very interesting that I had a need at some point to figure out my mother's love language. Um, just she was getting older, getting dementia. 
And I really wanted to really make her feel love as this is going on for her. She's not feeling well. And so I just really paid attention. And I noticed that whenever I saw her, she always told me how amazing I was and how beautiful I was and what a great daughter I was. Boy, was that an easy one to figure out, right? (laughs) So, yeah, so I just started doing it back. I told her what a great mom she is and how lucky I was. And she just glows around me. And that feels good to be able to give that to someone. Again, especially, you know, you know, she's not well. So I think we can do that with anyone if we really pay attention and they're obvious about it, you know, like friends right. aren't and always so obvious about it and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, and he talks about that in his book, Dr. Chapman. He talks about loving the unlovely. <laughs> yeah. What a great book you know, that is. It's- yeah. I mean, especially if you don't really like them, but you know, you do feel that it's important, but again, it's also self-knowledge and then being able to communicate in a way that people understand and without, you know, being too narcissistic. Uh, right, Alice? Well, that that's part of the problem because before I, the five love languages and, um, you know, I was trying to tell, let's say the one man who never had my food in his house and we were spending every, we were in a, you know, a, a very committed relationship that was lasting a while and I spent, every weekend at his house and I don't know how many different ways um, I tried to let him know how much I would really appreciate it because I would always go to him and how much I would really appreciate it if my favorite foods were in his house and it just never happened and I think what, what starts to happen is and he got a little annoyed with me because he thought You know, he misunderstood. Well, I misunderstood because I didn't understand that was my love language. You know, and he thought I was having expectations and asking for things. But um, what happens is the same as with any kind of miscommunication. Sort of Mm -hmm. resentment starts to build a little. You don't, I didn't feel very loved, even though he was a man who, uh, looking back now, was very much about uh, acts of, um, service. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't really understand the whole gift thing, which was what I'm clearly about. I mean, those are, those right. are gifts. So yeah, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, now that I know what I know, I would be able to express it better in a way. And that's what we're trying to tell Robin to express it in a way that doesn't sound like I'm shaming him or he's doing anything wrong. Yeah, and I do, you know, yeah, I blame. Know it's so that. easy to, to fall into the blame game in a relationship. Trust me. <laughs> but yeah, Dr. Yeah. Chapman. Yeah. I'm sorry? No, go ahead. I was going to say what's so interesting is even knowing what I know and, and know and you knowing what you know, because you're you've also done a lot of work, uh, even knowing what we know it doesn't mean that 100% of the time we're doing it. You know, we can, you know, we just notice afterwards that we did it. That's the only difference is that we've done it. And then we're like, oh, boy, I can't believe I just did that. Um, But at least the beauty in knowing that you did it is you can apologize. But prior to learning all this information, we didn't know. I didn't understand, you know. Why well, a man would get upset with me? I was like, I'm being yeah, so lovely. Why is he mad at me? <laughs> and that's such a good point. In the chat room, I just need to just have a quick sidebar with you. These folks know you very well. They're going to be prepared for this contest. Eli says, if Alice was coming to my house, I'd make sure lobster and champagne were on the menu. And everybody and pay attention <laughs> to that. <laughs> and Colleen Crystal uh, says. Uh, she says, well, first of all, Alice may not leave. And, hey, don't forget the almond milk. 
So, I yeah. mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking as I was writing that, I said, well, there's a clue for everybody. I like my almond milk in my coffee. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Eli and I um, have been Facebook friends for a very long time. And um, I know we get new new listeners on every week. So, again, I don't mean to embarrass you, Eli, but Eli is a brilliant composer. And uh, so I asked him if he would write me, compose and, and write for me uh, my own little music. I wanted something that was mine. And what was so sweet was he he said, well, wh- you know, what are you looking for? And I said, ah, something a little sexy, sassy, jazzy. And not only did he nail it, but I love, uh, he calls it alley cat, which is uh, <laughs> a steering term he started using years ago. So we always joke um, that when we met, what were we going to have, Eli? Lobster and champagne. So <laughs> yeah, everybody knows that's what Eli and I are having for dinner when we finally get to meet in person. <laughs> My audience does know me. But that's, I think, a lot because... Um, it's so lovely that so many people that I've engaged with on Facebook through the years um, are listening in on the show. So a lot of stuff comes up on Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, but it has to be announced, obviously, on the show for the uh, for the game. Um, I wanted and to, unless do we have another question? Um, well, I just wanted to add a little um, uh, preface to or uh, a follow up to Robin's challenge with her husband or her man mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. she just said okay I, I said it and she saw an improvement in his response he mumbled wait what, what did she say I'm sorry because I can't she, see the chat room listeners that's okay she said she said back to her husband I love you she said to her husband and he mumbled it back to her looked down and then smiled so right away we've got an improvement going right and so now she has to get brave enough to take it a step further. And I do not know um, her man well enough to know um, if speaking to him, sometimes even speaking the right words to a man, they might not hear it. Um, so she's got to figure out what the next step is. Does she buy the book? Does she go to him with, this is how I feel when you tell me you love me, this is important to me. Um, but it's sounding like Robin likes words of affirmation. So that mm-hmm. might be more than just I love you. I mean, you know that, Andy. Yeah. I mean, it's more Absolutely. than just I love you. It's like, wow, I I can't believe you wrote that amazing, pro, you know, you know, whatever, you know. Um, mm-hmm thing for work that was so amazing you're so smart it's a lot more than I mean that's a good place to start for her though clearly she needs that yeah. and I think so Robin, that we, we're giving you well. homework <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and I think that's what Michelle was talking about earlier too was and you know, just the glow she felt and I tell you that and and what that does is it just continues to feed the relationship but of course you can't rest on your laurels you have to keep feeding the relationship. You have to keep giving to it and giving to it and giving to it. It just does not operate on its own. Absolutely not. And, you know, many, many topics, a couple of times we've discussed relationships. We don't want to concentrate just on relationships unless, of course, everybody tells me they do. We could go there. But there's not just one tool. But this is certainly one of the really great ones that can create a shift, a big shift in your relationship if you both start using each other's love language and to pay attention. And I love the app idea because it'll make you think about it uh, or even your, like you have a little mindfulness bell that you use for things, Mm -hmm. you know, anything that will remind you, you know, it's not a once a week thing. And it's not like mush. You don't say I love you a hundred times a day. It's more like, you know, a few times a day, whatever, you know, somebody wakes up in the morning and you just say to them, you know, um, I think you're so phenomenal at your job. I'm really happy that you're happy there. That's words of affirmation. There's a mm-hmm. million different things you can say. Um, you know, I guess we're talking about, about, you know, Robin for now, but, you know, even acts of service. 
there are so many acts of service, you know, um, right. you know, a man just deciding every week he's going to wash his woman's car. Wow. You know, isn't that fabulous? If that's her thing, I mean, she, she'd be glowing all over the place, uh, doing the dishes, taking out the trash without being asked. And, you know, on the other side, the woman acts of service, maybe picking up the dry cleaning because he's rushing. Um, you know, there's just, and I, and the book gives you some, some ideas, but, yeah. um, but you know, Gary has a lot of books at five, the, the number five language, love languages.com. And you just click under resources and then books. And, you know, he has the five languages of love, love for teenagers. He has it for kids in, in grade school, grades one to six. Oh, wow. He has a wonderful book called Rising Above a Toxic Workplace. Oh my gosh, we could all use that. And the five languages of appreciation in the workplace. So you can really take this concept. He even has five languages military edition. Who knew? <laughs> well, well, that's what I said. I didn't realize what he had written for, but I knew he went. Because obviously when I read the five languages of love, I said, like I say with anything that's for couples, I'm looking at it. And I'm saying, mm-hmm. well, this is useful in all the world. Um, so what is that, Andy? That's five, the number five, love languages. Lovelanguages.com. Yeah, and then I think that's worth going to. There's a tab there that. called resources, too, and then books, and you'll see everything he's written there. So it, however it applies to you in your life, whether it's work, relationships, or you have some teenagers you'd like to help raise uh, their consciousness for even younger than that, or if your own relationship needs a little tweaking. I think this is such an important topic, Alice. I think it's just so important to know what our own needs are and how to get our needs filled and then also understanding the needs of well, the person or the both people sides in are, relationship with. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. both sides are equally as important. Uh, when we learn what our needs are and we learn to express and ask for them in ways that people will give them to us, Mm -hmm. you know, aside from the glowing and the happiness and the joy it brings us, it also um, does not create resentment and anger because that's what happens, whether in the workplace or with your family or with your friends. If you're not getting your needs met, you know, you're going to, mm-hmm. resentment's going to set in. So to figure out how to learn to tell even a friend. And then on the other side, wow, when you can, I love that he's got one for the workplace. Because imagine. And the military. <laughs> and, um, That's the uh, you know what? I love that. It makes me want to write letters now to the military <laughs> men. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I, you do. <laughs> I might have to post that in Facebook. I knew uh, I always have to paste something in Facebook group uh, the next day. But you just made me think, what a lovely idea. There's, there's groups where they'll give you someone's name, mm-hmm. someone who's in the military, just to write a letter. Wouldn't that be like oh. a great initiative? I love that. Well, speaking of initiatives, we have a caller. And the last four digits are 8755. Welcome to the Ask Alice Show. Any thoughts or questions you'd like to share with Alice? Hello, my darling goddesses. This is Kayleen. Oh, hi, Kayleen. Nice to have you on with us. How are you tonight? Birthday goddess. Kayleen the goddess. (laughs) I had to give you guys a call because I was just listening in. I don't know much about these books or the author, but... Um, you know, I do know about relationships and, you know, being at the end of a relationship and wanting just to not do that work. And Alice knows what I'm talking about because her and I had discussed this and about three years ago or so I was ready to just walk out on my relationship and my partner. And what changed was the communication. I mean, it, it was amazing being able to tell each other what we needed, what we wanted. And it was like a 180 shift. Uh, well, that's just. There you go. There you go. Yeah, when we made that shift, though, it became a life-changing shift. Like, everything shifted. It wasn't just our relationship. It was like, all of a sudden, all this positive stuff just, I don't know, blew our way like a tornado. 
Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, one of the things that I very strongly believe in, and I'm sure I've brought it up on many shows, is, you know, based on our thoughts and our words and our feelings is what we tend to attract into our life. So the fact that you had that shift that brought more joy into your life, obviously your thoughts, feelings, actions changed with everything. And that's how you were able to have all that other great stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was, you know, um, learning how to live in gratitude with each other and with life in general. And it just took a major, major shift in my life, in I think every aspect of it. Well, I, I have to say, I, um, I have to give Kayleen a lot of kudos because yeah, I'm not sure when you and I started uh, doing the work together. I don't remember if it was when I had my other blog up, um, but I have seen such a, a tremendous shift in you. And one of the things I love about that, apart from that you have joy, is often people will say to me, I can't, I can't have that, you know, and I'm, I'm like, well, if I can have it, why can't you? And so when they see someone else who has been willing to put forth the work and the miracle occurs, I love, I love when that's shared so other people see what's possible. Right. Especially, if you, you know, when you're in a situation right. where you don't even think it's going to happen and what are you going to do? I love that, Kayleen. And it worked. Yeah, Kayleen started with, uh, right? I remember that, Kayleen. You started with, I can't be in this relationship another second. Now you're madly in love with this person. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you guys, yeah. Are, you bought a house going from what on, I going on, Yeah, going on 10 years soon. Unbelievable. And, um, you know, I mean, we had a break in between, which was okay, though, because we had about a three-year, we had about a three-year break, but you know, we kept in touch during that time, and I think that also allowed us to grow a lot, being separated as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and and now it's just like it's it's ten times better. It's 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 coming back together as friends as well, and being able to have that communication between the two of us. But yeah, I mean, I was ready to just I, I was out. I was ready to be gone. I remember. Yep. I mean, what a shift you've had, and Aww. like I said, in your whole life. I mean, you're you're certainly a success story, and uh, I I'm really happy you shared that. Uh, you know, we've got a few success stories, people that haven't called in that I've done some some work with, and I I really like that. Not 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 for me, just for the rest of the world to see what you know. Look at what you've done. I mean, complete. You know, complete. Oh, yeah. Yeah, clearly you can be as discouraged as discouraged can be and just want to end things. And look, you, it gets better and better and better because the effort happened. You used, you found your right words and your right connection. Mm, delicious outcome. Yeah, well, thank you guys because this is a great topic. And uh, thank you for having me on. I do appreciate you guys. And, you know, coming and doing this in and out every week, that's that's awesome because you guys are touching a lot of people right now. And I it's good work. Good work. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for that, Kayleen. I, I appreciate those words greatly. I love you. <laughs> love you guys, too. Have a good evening. You, too. Bye-bye. That is so special, Aww. Andy, when, when we hear the – you know, and even Michelle, who doesn't um, – I'm, I'm sorry to talk for her, but, you know, she's free about speaking. She um, – you know, I think she started doing some work about three years ago, and she's another one. I just cannot get over in what I consider a very short time. I think three years is a very short time. Oh, yeah. To have had, and I'm not just talking about relationships, just in life in general, uh, to have so many beautiful shifts in the way she views herself, the way she views her world. And I love to see this and to share this so other people know um, in all aspects of our life, we can find joy. We can get out of a bad place. 
And we know that, you know, I've been in bad places. You've been in, who hasn't been in bad places? <laughs> Dr. Seuss probably wrote a book about that. <laughs> By the way, and everybody, I, I my, love Dr. <laughs> Seuss. Write that down. One of my favorite children's <laughs> authors, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Giving away little hints. <laughs> and what, again, was your favorite drink, Alice, while you're, we're talking about Alice's fave? For the contest. Well, if I'm having lobster, it's champagne. But if I was to ask that question about the lobster and champagne, it would probably be, just so you all know, uh, if Eli and I were to have dinner, what would we have? And the answer would be lobster and champagne. Because um, my favorite, my I think my favorite drink lately, you know the answer to this, Andy. Uh, but my, lately, my favorite drink seems to be margaritas. I just like on a little margarita kick. Well, you know, you can get those nice clean ones too, where they're just, you know, really good alcohol, really good silver tequila with some really good, something like a good triple sec or Grand Marnier or something to give it that nice smooth touch. Fresh squeezed lime juice, little oh, agave. Mm -mm -mm. Shake that puppy up. On pouring. <laughs> As I read before, Andy. I can't wait to come and sit on your porch and have you make me a homemade margarita. <laughs> yes, it will be an act of service I'd be happy to share with you, and I'll give you a gift along with it and, and tell you how much I appreciate you, my queen. <laughs> uh, you do that all the time, as I do for you. I think we've, we've, we've got each other's uh, back there. We, we spew so much love on the radio. I mean, they think everybody's like, what's with these two? <laughs> but we know each other very well, I think. Uh, you know, we've got we've got each other's yeah. number, right? So, um, Absolutely. Yeah, but, but it's um. I'm sorry, I'm getting. I'm getting oh, also, um, I just wanted to mention, even people that are uncoupled, you know, single. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really great to figure out your love. Why do you have to wait till you're in a relationship? Imagine if you understood your love language prior to getting into a relationship that's you don't need to because there could be conflict trying to figure it out together mm -hmm. and if you understood how to pay attention to figure out their love language so this is good work even if you're single in the in the romantic aspect right um, you know as right. opposed to all the millions of books i can't wait to go look <laughs> well i just have to, um, i just want to throw one little thing that came out and that's on uh facebook Irma gomez is saying Love, love. I'm listening to Andy and Alice right now. It's wonderful. Isn't that sweet? Oh, Irma. She's such a sweetheart. It's I funny. Know. I don't realize until, um, until people start posting things how many, uh, how, how, how engaged we are with just so many truly amazing people on Facebook. And, you know, again, um, I love when people get involved in our Facebook group. We've got such an amazing group. Uh, anyone that's interested um it's called the ask you no know, it's actually called ask alice show you could just type it into the mm -hmm. search bar but we often you know might continue the conversation from the show but you know i like i'm silly i like to post you know little things uh to get people thinking uh it's a wonderful way to add some short topics that might not be able to fill a show and i I love some of the wisdom and amazing um, threads that come out of that. Yeah, right, Andy? Right. Oh, absolutely. Amazing. And right now, Irma and Nicole are laughing because they're like, we're having, you know, they're both listening to the show and they're having their own little sidebar conversation. Nicole oh, how from cute Canada. Is this? And they're both, they're both and, incredibly lovely women. Mm. Oh, <laughs> so great. And, you know, they're from different parts of the world, which you do. You have a very international audience, and you talk about their own experiences, and it's lovely. And that's where, that's the beauty of the Facebook group is the ability to keep the conversation going and uh, have some side conversations if you're listening live, too. <laughs> You know, no, you know what's sort great. of neat about that? We've got our, our, you know, the chat room, for those of you listening in, um, via the phone or even on the computer and aren't aware, if you uh, sign up for an account with Blog Talk Radio, uh, then when you're on the page, you see a chat room. So we've got our chatters who love to chat mm -hmm. and uh, oftentimes 
where we've gotten all these questions, but oftentimes they're off in their other world. And now we've got people doing it on Facebook. That's so sweet. I love it. It uh, is. I so I just want to put, do a quick shout out to both of them that we love them. Oh, big shout out to them. I, I, I love Irma. I love Nicole, but I love Laura and Robin and Tom and Eli and Jessica and, and Michelle. And Colleen who's on tonight too as well. Oh, and Katie Nicole Yeah. yeah. And Eli says back, I love this show. Aw, Eli. And he stays well, up really late amazing. to tune in. Eli, you um, absolutely amaze me. He's uh, he's in the UK. So it's like, I think one in the morning or midnight or one in the morning. Um, and the first time Eli came on, uh, I was very excited to have him on. And it never occurred to me that he would show up every week and stay up late. That, that thrills me to death. That's because we love you. I, you know why I think he comes on, Andy? He knows you have a crush on him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, that's and then your voice and your wisdom. And so, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking that um, we all have a crush on all our peeps. <laughs> oh, no. I have a crush on everyone. Well, you know, and I just encourage everybody to, I mean, there are free PDFs of the five lang love languages, so you can easily, you know, download a bunch of free material, and people have been blogging about it forever, and you know, I'm sure there's a video on YouTube, but you find out, take the time to do that little quiz and find out what yours is and ask your beloved or pay attention to signs in the workplace, wherever you are, on what would make someone else happy. It's a nice stretch out of our own zone, so to speak. It is, and, and you just made a very good point. You really don't need the book at this point because there are things on YouTube. There are free resources. Um, I'm going to check out the website. I didn't know, but I'm sure there are quizzes and things. I mean, of course, the book is cool, too, but for people that, you know, don't really have the money to be spending on books and things, um, most of the topics that we've discussed, there's a lot of information, um, and YouTube's always a great place. Andy, you turned me on to that. Every time I ask oh, yeah. Andy a question, how do I do this, Andy? Just go to YouTube and type it in, and oh, my God, what comes up is great. <laughs> I, know, it's, it's I love YouTube now, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally, totally. That's why you're the executive producer, and I'm the host, because You've got all this uh, business savvy. I love it. <laughs> so um, we've got any, we, I see where, wow, that show went fast. Um, Again. Any, say, any, last, any last words before we uh, we sign out? No, the, the chat room has, you know, it's like they're all clink clinking, even though it's just words. They really share the love of each other. They have great advice for each other. And I think that's so wonderful and so supportive. I encourage everybody to bring it right on over to the Ask Alice Show group on Facebook. You just ask to be invited in and Alice will take good care of you and get you in there and uh, keep the conversations going. Love it. Perfect. So um, I just want to let everyone know that next week, uh, we're going to be doing another Dear Alice show. So um, I hope a lot of you will come with questions because that is just a free-for-all. Any question goes. And again, for those of you who can't make the show or feel a little shy about coming on the air, uh, you can feel free to email your questions to info at AskAliceShow.com. And Andy, we got a lot of questions uh, last last month that way, didn't we? That's right. Absolutely. And I mean, we, <laughs> what are you I laughing say, about? Well, I'm laughing because it you know, you just never know what's going to come up in those shows, in those questions. No, I mean we're very daring. I find I feel very courageous and daring, but I also have to say that I love, love, love that show because so many different questions came up different the nature of the questions um so it, it created a lot of topics and 
that's a lot of fun, you know. I mean, this is. is a great show. It's fun to stick to a topic if, if people want to. We can certainly change topics at any time. But that creates different topics just because everybody's asking different questions. Um, but, yeah, it puts me on the spot for sure. <laughs> but I love, I love that show. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's a keeper. So, oh, and a, a mm-hmm. quick um, high five and mwah to uh, <laughs> our dear friend Irma uh, at All About Irma. Just sent us a lovely tweet for the show too, and I just wanted to give her some appreciation. Now, is that her language of love? I don't know, but <laughs> I thought I'd just thank for, thank her for the Twitter. Well, love. that's the whole thing. I mean, I I'd like to know all our people that um, did not share. I mean, now. I revealed way too much about myself. I mean, those of you that know me via Facebook and and through, you know, whatever the show, know that I'm basically a very private person. I don't discuss uh, anything much. So this was probably the most, other than what I like to drink and eat and <laughs> that sort of thing. Well, and because we all know your age. We all know your age, Alice. It's 48. That's right. How old am I, Andy? You're 48. And how old? I'm 48 now. And how old am I turning on January 30th? 48. <laughs> Everybody remember that. If you weren't on the show <laughs> last week, uh, you can listen to the replay. But I turn 48 every year. That's it. So <laughs> thank you for remembering, Andy. <laughs> You're welcome. Just want to help somebody win. Win, win, win. Well, we've already got quite a few quite a few questions, and we still have another uh, shout next week before the. Um, that's going to be hard coming up with just one question, quite frankly, but uh, wow. it'll be a lot of fun. I um, I have two. I've got a debate back and forth on. So. Mm-hmm. Just have well, to wait well, the way this is going to work is I'm going to ask the question, so I might say. Uh, what kind of milk do I like in my coffee? <laughs> and the answer, is almond, the answer is almond milk. And I wasn't going to, you know, just real quick, I wasn't going to, you know, go into all the details. But how how I'd like to do this to give people on replay and everybody else is I'm going to wait right up until the next show. And it's not the first person that gets the answer right. That's not fair. Anyone that gets the answer right, I will put their name on paper and put it in a bowl, and that's how I will pick the winner. And people can either private message me, they can post it on Facebook, they can tweet me, there's a million, they can email me, there's a million ways. Um, and so it'll be a fair, you know, a fair, a fair game. It's just going to be hard for me to pick a question. <laughs> we might have to do this every month. Okay? Look at what's happening here. <laughs> Anyway, anyway. Uh, as usual, we always go a few minutes over. <clears throat> so uh, now that you've got all that information, I really do hope, though, that, uh, we, you know, we get um, uh, the, the questions in the chat and, and questions on the phone. We did get a few. Uh, we got mm-hmm. some great ones. We got some great ones via email. So don't be shy. Ask anything. I uh I have a great imagination. There's nothing that will make me um get embarrassed. <laughs> right, and spread the word. Let other folks know, you know, who may have a question and wouldn't mind posting it in the Facebook group. They don't have to call in or they can post it in the chat room. Yeah. I know there's a question out there that's lingering in somebody's mind that they probably just went, ah, I wonder why that happened to me or what do I do in this situation? I just know yeah. what Alice well, actually, that is actually a very good good show to share because I think uh, a very large portion of the people walking the earth have some inquiring <laughs> inquiring question, um, you know. But you know, don't don't ask me about politics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, not. We will be touching a, that. No, well, it's got to be. You know, well, I just want to remind people as we exit the show or, you know, we heard in the beginning, the music is Alley Cat by Eli Cameron. And you can find him right in the Ask Alice show. You can find him on Facebook. And, uh, you know, he's just got a lot of great music out there for folks. He does. And he and he'll 
if you need, if you need, I mean, again, listen, you know, listen as we go out and what he did for me going out and going in, you know, anyone that needs uh, something personalized like that, because for a show like this, what a lot of people do is you could go out and for $40 purchase um, a theme song that other people can use, but I wanted something that was mine. See, gifts, mm -hmm. gifts, 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 even though, I, you know, I didn't expect it as a gift, but that is receiving gifts. I wanted it to be mine and mine alone. That made me, and I did feel so much love and so appreciated when, when I heard it and when he called it Alley Cat. <laughs> he, to me, that's a gift, you know, yeah. uh, which proves that affirmation. All right. Well, we're going to say our goodbyes then. Uh, so I do want to thank all of you for joining me, all of you listening in, all of you who, who shared with us. And, uh, of course, I never forget our little chatters in the chat room. I just love, love, love all of you. And, and now it looks like, you know, Irma, Nicole, and whoever was in Facebook, I've got to mm -hmm. add that to my goodbyes. And Andy, um, a big thank you for you. You are just beautiful, charming, delicious. You didn't blow kisses this week like you usually do, so oh, I'm gonna blow mwah, 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 everybody. Well, I'm gonna blow you kisses. So there. Thank you. Okay, yeah. everybody. Well, I'll see it. you. <laughs> you get the kisses this week. So everybody, mm -hmm. I'll see you again next week. And until then, let's pay attention to the clues of those close to us so we can love them in a way that they will feel it. Thank you for tuning in to another lively conversation on the Ask Alice Show. Alice loves to connect with her listeners, so please join the Ask Alice Show Facebook group where you can keep the conversation going and post questions for future shows. And be sure to stay tuned in to the show by clicking the follow button right here on Blog Talk Radio and by subscribing to the Ask Alice Show YouTube channel. If you have a high-quality product or service you'd like to advertise with the Ask Alice Show audience, please email Alice's assistant, Rachel, at info at askalishow.com. Until next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, keep asking those questions.